Hey guys! Hello! Hello guys! Welcome back to the Castaway Couple. Guys, just a quick one. So, sorry for the radio silence over the past few weeks. We haven't been able to get a video to you. As, in, as you can see, there's a fair bit of mess around the house. So, we haven't had a chance to really tend to a lot of the stuff that we should be doing. Um, and of course, that's because of all the focus that's been going towards our upcoming trip later this month to see our home in the Philippines. Um, as you can see, things are pretty, pretty chaotic and unhinged around here. Um, and we've also gotten some much needed rain after many, many weeks of sunshine. I think it's been almost five or six weeks. It's getting close to two months since we've had any rain around here. And as you can see, the plants and the lawns are really, really loving it. So it's a very welcome change. Some of the hedges and things have started to die a little bit. Even this pot plant out the front here, some of the leaves have started to look a little bit sad. But it's a welcome change and we are grateful for it. Now, magic drop in. Yeah, this is gonna look weird. I'm wearing completely different clothes. Um, when I was doing the vlog the other day, work decided to give me a call and uh, call me in for an overtime shift. So, with the trip upcoming, um, I figured I would take it. So I sort of dropped everything I was doing, chucked my clothes on and uh, went to work that day. So. We're picking up sort of where we left off. So, talking about the upcoming trip, it's creeping up and it's literally just around the corner now. Just a few more weeks and we'll be heading off. And speaking of which, we've got some pretty exciting updates when it comes to the house. So, the cabinetry is just about finished. There are a few minor things, touch-ups and realignments that need to be done, which the boys are finishing off today. And they'll be coming back on Monday to install all the appliances. So. That's really, really exciting. Um, and it's the final piece of the puzzle when it comes to what needs to be done. And I think that's pretty much it for the builder. So they'll be handing the house over probably the middle of the next week. And the rest is up to us guys. So we're pretty much move in ready. And <laughs> honestly, it's after such a long journey, it's been stressful. There's been a lot of ups and downs. And um, to be able to call the house pretty much finished. Um, it's, yeah, it's quite a surreal thing to feel. So Jan's been busy preparing a few things that she wants to get done in terms of um, visions that she has for the house while we're over there. So we're only going for three weeks, which is better than any other time we've been there. But still, in the grand scheme of things, three weeks to do a lot of work isn't a lot of time. So I don't know much, how much of a holiday this is really going to be for us. Um, however, I think it's still going to be quite a good experience and we should enjoy it nonetheless. So I've also got a few bits and pieces that I want to achieve for, for the house while we're on our trip. So um, I'll be heading down to Bunnings today and I've been digging around in the shed, speaking of which I might have to find a few bits and bobs. But um, there are a few things that I want to build um, in terms of furniture like dining tables and coffee tables and such. And I'll explain my reasoning for that soon. This router is really bloody heavy. Like, I don't know if I actually want to be taking that with me. So all these small bits and bobs like router bits and biscuits, biscuit cutters, um, it's well worth sticking in the luggage. So there's three of us going. For those of you that have been following us, my dad's gonna be coming on this trip with us as well. So um, I basically purchased 30 kg, which you get on the international flight anyway, but I purchased 30 kg domestic once we're going from Manila to Tacloban, 30 kg each. So we've got 90 kilos between us. Dad's not taking much, so I'm gonna use probably most of his and he's just gonna stick all his clothes and basic essentials in his carry-on. So we should be right. The cooktop's probably 27 kilos. The ranch hood's pretty light. That one's only about 11 or 12 kilos. So um, we'll manage. I'm not taking much. A few pairs of undies, a few pairs of socks, shorts and maybe a couple of t-shirts, you know, what boys are like. So we travel light, we travel easy. The missus, I'm gonna have to have a bit of a war with her. Just please make sure when you go, we don't take too much shit, all right? No, I'll take what I want! <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll make it work. Bubble wrap's next. Where is it located? Which aisle? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, see? Check this out. I don't think we can get anything pre-made like this in the Philippines, though, but I can just get Noel to weld me something like this. Paint it up and then we can... That's the leg of our table. That's the leg of our tables. 
just on either end, and then biscuit joint a bunch of timbers together, 90 by 45 or whatever. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Okay. Ooh, that down there. We have bought everything. A few items and we've got 301 46 <laughs> cents. You're, uh, you always spend more money than you are. You think, <laughs> don't you? Yeah, I'll have to do a few trips. Well, it begins. We're finally getting the clutter out of the house and into the luggage. So aside from that project, my two biggest projects are gonna be the dining table and the coffee table. All the other stuff we're probably going to buy. We're pretty content with what you can get there um, in terms of couches, but there is definitely a lot of things that are lacking, isn't there? Uh, yes, there are a lot of the stuff that we can find in, in Ormo, like, like the nicest table. Like, it's hard to find a good size of the table that we wanted. We wanted a bigger size, but most of the sizes displayed in the shops like six seaters, something like that. It's hard, like we just have to find someone who can costumize, like I mean Well that's why there's no point. That you know that's why I'm gonna do it that's since why you do it, build it. Because I figured it's not like in Australia, you know, you've got Amart Furniture, you've got Gainesville, you've got Freedom, so they're kind of your, you know, even Harvey Norman, like they're your affordable level brands where you can go get really nice furniture you don't have to spend five six thousand dollars on a lounge set or on a dining set but it's not like you know a five six hundred dollar set from ikea or mandawe phone where it just looks really really cheap and ugly and you know you just you stick it into a rental or something so um it's a bit difficult so i figured i've got the know-how i've got the tools there and the skills so i may as well i may as well go ahead and build exactly what i you know, what's going to suit the house. So I think the biggest thing about moving to the Philippines and living in the Philippines is going to be adjusting your expectations. Because mm. one of the biggest challenges in the Philippines is managing your expectations, right? Like, especially if you have a Western mindset where you're always, you know, dreaming about perfection and you accept nothing less. Like, you've got to understand that options are limited, especially in the provinces. Um, so I think that if you're not prepared to pay top dollar, you'll definitely struggle to get what you want in the Philippines. And if you want Western quality, by the way, you can get it. You absolutely can get it. We've seen cabinet makers and furniture makers there that make, you know, cabinetry that's as good as this. Yes. You know, you won't see a flaw or, or a blemish, but the catch is you're going to have to pay Western prices. Lots of money, same price. Australia. It's no cheaper, is it? Like, you know, the saying holds true, you get what you pay for. And especially after COVID, after inflation, there's not that much difference between products in Australia and products in the Philippines, especially if you want that Western level of quality. So, you know, prices are rising everywhere and the days of cheap luxury are pretty much are pretty much gone, hey? And it's, it is a bit of a reality check and it, it, it can be a bit shocking, but... <laughs> You know, that's why basically I've chosen to build some of the furniture myself. And since, as I mentioned, I am a tradie, I've got the skills and the tools to create exactly what I want. Um, but if you don't have that ability and still want the top tier stuff, well, the truth is you're gonna have to be prepared to pay top dollar as you would expect to pay here at home or be content with what you get for the price. I guess to sum it up, guys, like it's not about scams or being ripped off. There's nobody there that's actually trying to scam you. You're basically, what you pay for is the level of skill and quality that you're gonna get from a certain person. So no one's gonna charge you and promise you that they can deliver this, charge you $1.3 million and then deliver something that's worth half of that. You know, sorry, pesos, why did I say dollars? You know, they're just not gonna do it because they know that it's not worth it. So laborers and trades know their worth. They know what they can deliver and they're not trying to scam you because if they charge you 1.3, 1.5 million to do your house, you're gonna get exactly that. You know, that's why it costs so much money. But if you pay under 300,000 pesos, you're gonna get something, and that's where the level can differ because you might get some tradies that 
are really hopeless and if you pay that amount of money you, you'll get something that's really subpar or you'll get something that's within 10% that's close but you've paid a lot less money for it and that again comes down to doing your due diligence and really checking out previous projects of theirs and just making sure that the money that you're investing is with the right person and that you're making the right choice. So. It's not about scams or being ripped off. I don't think anyone's really trying to go there and rip you off. I know that there's a, you know, a foreign attacks and all that sort of stuff, but <gasps> easy way, Chuck. I wouldn't want you to know. In today's era, and with how modern the the Philippines is becoming, it's really not. It's not as bad as it used to be, right? So you get what you paid for. Skilled tradespeople charge accordingly for their expertise and there are plenty of talented Filipino craftsmen who can deliver really good quality. Yes. But like I keep saying, you'll have to pay for it. So just understand what you truly want from living in the Philippines and if you can embrace those small imperfections and find happiness in the journey, yes. then the Philippines is really going to be a great place to live. Um, it really will be. But if you expect perfection at a bargain, then you're probably going to be in for a bit of a shock. Um, so yeah guys, I, I suppose that like the point that we're trying to make is, you know, if you're one of those traditional style Westerners that, you know, gets really angry and really upset when something doesn't go your way, and if you don't get that absolute perfection or exactly what you want, want um, you're probably honestly not cut out for living in the Philippines. And yeah, it's <laughs> it's probably going to frustrate you more than what it's worth. So, you know, a lot of people jump on YouTube and they watch all these videos of people living the simple life in the Philippines and it looks like a very nice concept, uh, a very enticing ideal, but the reality is a lot of people don't actually realize that that's not what they want. They want to have the luxury, they want to have, you know, all the the comforts of the Western lifestyle, but at a bargain and for a cheap price. Now, whilst living, the cost of living is cheaper, when it comes to houses and materials and products, there's not much in it anymore. So, um, yeah, really, really question why you're making the move. Is it just because you saw somebody else do it and you think it's what you want? Or is a simple life actually what you want? Because the two are very, very different. It's a stark contrast and you might be in for a world of hurt if you haven't really thought about it, thought about what you want, and um, you might make a decision that you might regret. So let us know what you guys think in the comments below. Is, is the Philippines really the ideal lifestyle for you? Is it what you think you would enjoy? Or, or do you honestly think, you know, uh, are you better off staying where you are? If this content came as a wake up call or as a surprise, let us know what you think of it in the comments below and let us know your feelings on what it would be like for you to live and build a home in the Philippines. Yes. So when we're in the Philippines, we'll be doing a lot of behind the scenes footage and we'll be filming a lot, but we don't have any access to editing over there because I can't bring my computer with me. So we'll be updating you every few days with shorts. Um, we've got a series of shorts planned just so you guys can trek along with us. But um, yeah, please stay tuned and wait for the main content probably a couple of weeks after we come back. So we're really, really keen to deliver that to you. So hang in there, stick with us. Um, we've got some really exciting stuff coming up and join us on our journey as we fly to the Philippines at the end of the month, guys. Look after yourselves and thank you. Yes, this is it. We're going to Philippines. I can't wait to be there again and to see my family and to see our new home. And then um, we're gonna be uh, very quiet we're gonna, we'll keep you updated as well with short clips just to keep you updated of what we, we are up to. But yeah, hope you stay tuned. This is the Castaway Couple, signing, signing off. off.